Hello and welcome to the channel. Now in today's video I'm going to be showing you the Xbox fridge and do some tests to see if it works and to see how much it costs to run. So to start this isn't technically a fridge it's a replica fridge which in fact is actually called a thermoelectric cooler. But in this video I'm going to be referring it to it as a fridge rather than thermoelectric cooler. The fridge itself is 1.5 times bigger than a Series X, so it is a beast standing 47 centimetres high and a square footprint of 23 centimetres either side. On the front door is an Xbox logo which lights up at the press of the lower button. There's also another button located above the fake disc slot and that controls the lights on top of the unit. Also on the front of the fridge, at the bottom right is a USB port Type-A 5V 2.1. On the left of the fridge is an Xbox logo and it's completely plain on the right. On the bottom of the fridge there are four raised feet, with the front two being longer so that the fridge almost points upwards slightly. On the rear of the fridge are fake cutouts for all of the ports found on a real Xbox Series X. And at the top of the rear panel is a port for AC, one for DC, a green power LED and a switch for three power settings, eco, max and off. Once you open the fridge you are greeted with an Xbox colour green interior, two removable shelves, two removable snack shelves. The interior is marketed to hold 12 cans of drink with a total of 10 litres in capacity. Overall the fridge seems very well made, it's a lot larger than I was expecting even though I knew it was 1.5 times larger than an Xbox Series X, but for £90 you are paying over the odds for a thermo cooler because it looks like an Xbox. You can buy much larger coolers that hold more for only slightly less, but in no way will they look as good as this in your games room. You pay for the look and I think it's worth it for an Xbox fan. In the past few days we've been testing the fridge in a series of extremely unscientific tests but they are real world tests and give you an indication of how good, bad or expensive or cheap the Xbox fridge really is. So we have the variables, the first one a can in a regular home fridge set to cool down to 4 degrees celsius. The second was one can in the Xbox on eco, the third one was one can in the Xbox on max and we also repeated the test on the full fridge and we'll talk about that later. So the test goes like this, one can is opened and the temperature of the liquid was recorded. It was then placed into the fridge and the temperature was recorded at 30 minute intervals for a maximum of 3 hours. All cans started off at exactly or close to 16 degrees celsius which is 61 degrees fahrenheit. The test was then repeated for all three scenarios and the results are as follows. The home fridge dropped 8.6 degrees celsius. The can in the Xbox on eco mode dropped an impressive 7.5 degrees celsius. And finally the can in the Xbox on max mode dropped a whopping 9.7 degrees celsius. As I said we also did the test with a full fridge for each mode which took a considerably longer amount of time to cool down, so the results were around 3 times longer to cool down to the same temperature, but as soon as it's up to running speed there would be no change in the cost or the temperature. From the tests we did you can see that the home fridge was sat in between the eco and the max mode. In eco mode the fan on the top of the fridge is barely audible. On max mode you can certainly hear it whirring along, so if you are concerned about noise then you could just to leave it on eco. Next up was cost. I have a meter which re records how much electricity an appliance is using and with the Xbox attached we left it running for an hour on eco and an hour on max and measured the cost for me. Everyone will be different as you may be paying different for, for the electricity, so the results may be slightly different but you get the idea. And the idea is this ain't cheap. So for running the Xbox on Eco for an entire year 24-7 cost me £81.98 or 22p a day. Running the Xbox on Max for a year cost me £10 more at £91.01 or 25p per day. 
In the real world, you may not run it every day. To get the temperature down of a can to its optimum temperature of 4 degrees Celsius would take several hours, and then to keep it there, maybe running the fridge for longer than you may expect. So is this fridge worth it? Well, for me, I think it's a great novelty fridge that is more of a want than a need. But already having two domestic fridges in the house, the Xbox fridge is something of a luxury. And for me personally, I'd rather spend the £90 a year on nearly 250 cans of Coke at room temperature. So there we have it then. That was my look and my testing of the Xbox fridge. Do let me know your thoughts on this. Please do like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye-bye.